There's no way around it. Northwest Mall has seen better days. Once a quintessential retail hub in Houston's booming suburbs, the mall has been in decline for decades, losing out to bigger, better, and newer venues as the city changed around it. But thanks to a revolutionary project that until recently seemed like a pipe dream, this mall, or rather, the land the mall is on, is set to become Houston's station for Texas's new high-speed rail line. But wait, why here? Why would a dead mall five miles from downtown be chosen for a pioneering transportation project? And what are the chances that A, the high-speed rail system will even actually be built, and B, that this will be the Houston station? Let's dig into the mall's history, its decline over time, and the high-speed rail plan that could change this site and the city of Houston forever. Before we start, like and subscribe and all that jazz. Now, let's get into the story. Houston in the 60s was booming. The population doubled between 1950 and 1970, and subdivisions were popping up all over what was then the northwest outskirts of the city. This boom also happened to follow the rise of a cool new transportation trend that would define Houston through the modern day, the freeway. The west half of the 610 loop was built in the mid-1950s, originally a state highway called Loop 137, before being incorporated into Dwight D. Eisenhower's interstate highway system as 610. And it was here that it crossed US 290, or rather, what was 290 at the time, and is now another piece of Houston history worth exploring. Another video coming on that, someday. This was a very strategic place to put a mall. The subdivisions here were developed starting in the 1940s as middle-class suburban housing, and two major highways intersected right in the mall's front yard. Northwest Mall is a sister mall to and fraternal twin of Almeida Mall in southeast Houston along the Gulf Freeway. They were developed at the same time by the Roos Company, both characterized by tapered brick arches on the anchor stores and nearly identical staggered linear internal layouts lined with stores. A note here, all the interior footage I'm using is from my friend Mike's website, Houston Historic Retail. You should definitely check out his site. Link in the description. Northwest Mall opened in 1968 anchored by a Foley's, a Penny's, and a Palais Royale to fanfare that included the city's mayor and a local high school band. Unfortunately for Northwest Mall, the good days would not last forever. This was never going to be a destination retail spot, losing that honor to the Mac Daddy of Houston Malls, the Galleria, just four miles south, which opened in 1970. Northwest endured, even thrived as a local mall for years, but as the 80s oil busts and a changing neighborhood around it took their toll, the mall saw fewer and fewer visitors, and by the late 90s, its fate seemed nearly certain. The decline was solidified with the redesign of the 290-610 interchange that made the site more difficult to reach. The Pennies closed in 2000, Macy's in 2008. The interior mall area remained open with a withering handful of second-tier and often transient tenants before being finally shuttered in 2017. That gets us to Northwest Mall's current suboptimal state. It's not totally abandoned. Interestingly enough, it's attracted a few tenants in search of a lot of empty space for not a lot of money. A giant and particularly cool antique center occupies the old pennies, a healthcare career prep school occupies a space on the north side, and a granite company material yard now takes up more of the parking lot than cars do. But it's certainly not the lively place that was envisioned in 1968. The entrances are boarded up, trash litters the loading docks, and just enough maintenance is done to stop it from completely falling apart. Oddly enough, Almeida Mall has not faced the same precipitous decline. Although Houston's southeast side faced similar demographic and economic changes, the mall has been able to adapt and has pivoted its tenant base as the area changed. Now back to Northwest. Thanks to a feature that seemed more like an inconvenience in the mall days, this has been determined by Texas Central to be the most ideal location for the Houston station of their planned Houston to Dallas high-speed rail line. The company is planning a 240-mile line connecting Texas's two largest cities based on the lines of the Central Japan Railway Company with N700S trains capable of exceeding 200 miles an hour. One of the hardest parts of getting high-speed rail approved is finding a place to put it, especially in urban areas. The existing Union Pacific Rail Line right-of-way that parallels Hempstead Road runs right into the city and doesn't require arduous eminent domain acquisitions, which can get held up in court for years. More on that in a second. And there's our handy mall. 
It's rumored that Texas Central originally wanted to put the station further into the city, but feared this final run would be arduous, if not impossible, to acquire and build. All of the station sites under final consideration were outside the loop. High-speed rail has been floated in Texas for decades, with the first serious initiative tracing its roots back to the early 90s. This attempt was met with a legal blockade enabled by the lobbying efforts of Southwest Airlines, backed up by a slurry of fast food restaurants and hotel chains who stood to lose money if the project went forward. The project, called Texas TGV, received federal approval but was unable to garner sufficient funding and was scrapped in 1993. The possibility was raised again in the mid-2000s, this time with the entirely privately backed Texas Central behind it. The Houston-Dallas run received federal approval in 2021, and Texas Central put in an option to buy the land that Northwest Mall is on. All that said, what are the odds of this actually happening? Texas's first high-speed rail attempt was met with an outright corporate blockade, and even in other places with big support behind building these systems, it doesn't always come out as planned. Most infamously, California's high-speed rail line connecting LA and San Francisco has been bogged down for years with a multitude of external and self-inflicted issues and whose revised initial operating route will connect only a small, inconvenient piece of the plan initially promised to voters. Also, three times the budget. Texas Central will face two major issues, money and the use of eminent domain. Contrary to popular belief, it is not only possible but well-precedented for private companies to use eminent domain in certain circumstances, especially railroads. Undeterred by this precedence, landowners have sued over Texas Central's use of eminent domain, going as high as the state Supreme Court with arguments not set to start until 2022. Texas Central still lists a 2026 commercial service start date, but permitting appears to have put the project a year behind schedule already. The company also cites unstable global financial markets as a reason for delay. Construction costs have exploded in the past few years, and high-speed rail projects are not immune from this. Despite this, I really want to believe it will happen. This would revolutionize the way Houston and Dallas interact, and if it stays privately funded, would provide a successful new model for high-speed rail in the U.S. So what do you think? Do you think the high-speed rail line will actually happen? Fight about it in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel and come with me on the next adventure.